hear the conversation. Let's see here. Hello, everybody. Happy Christmas for the viewers on my channel. This is the first video that's been uploaded this week. And I thank you guys for your patience, but I'm super, super excited today. We're going to have a really fun day. I, of course, have the lovely Catherine Edwards from her channel over at Catherine Edwards. I have Lorne and Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa. And then, of course, I have Cindy from Sacred Garden Yoga. I know that these none of these lovely people with me today need any introduction because you guys all know them. But nonetheless, here they are. I will put in case you don't know them, I will put all their links down in the description box below so you can go and give them a follow as well. How are you guys doing today? Good, good, good. Really good. Yeah. Actually. Definitely. Really good. Good. Really Christmas spirit. Feeling that Christmas spirit? Sure. Yes, I am. Yeah. I really am. Yeah. It took me a while, but I'm feeling it now. Yes. This yes. Time, day or yeah. two ago. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I think I was saying on what, and you got your tree up, Cindy. Well, Cindy, you want to say Mary Saturnalia? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was what we're gonna talk about today. All the different pagan, and it's so funny because this week we were trying to do that show on Aquarius Rising Africa. Of course, Monday we ended up not putting the show up, and then Tuesday the internet got bad, and so that's why I said just join us on this round table because we were gonna talk about these pagan roots of Christmas anyway, which I don't think is shocking to most of our viewers. So I think most of our viewers know that majority of the holidays that we have that are considered to be of Christian um, uh, roots are not actually of Christian roots, but are of um, something different. Not, not necessarily always dark, but sometimes it is dark. So do you guys want to talk about Saturnalian first? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who oh, wants yes, to please. <laughs> I can't wait to learn all about this because it's not something I know a lot about. I've been doing a bit of research, so I couldn't be happier to hear from you bunch of experts on this. Well, can I tell you guys what? So there's a, I think we've all had a couple of like red pill moments in our lives, like little things that led us to where we are now. And the Saturnalian Brotherhood was one of those big red pills for me. And I'll tell you guys what happened. I was in India at the time. And I was taking an oil bath and I, I know I've talked about oil baths on my channel before, but it's basically you put your cast oil all over your body for it to pull out impurities. We do that like once a week when we're in India and you sit for like an hour with the oil on your body and then you wash it off. And it's, it's an amazing, amazing thing to do. It's so good for your health. But anyway, I was in this position where I was sitting on a towel with castor oil all over me. And I'd put Jordan Maxwell's lecture on the Saturnalian Brotherhood up on my computer to watch while I was doing the castor oil bath and I had castor oil all over my hand so I couldn't really touch my computer and I literally it was like tough love from God like I had to sit there and watch that whole lecture and I was shook it after it was done with how much is manipulated by this cult of Saturn um which Saturn itself I will say for people watching and I, I think this is kind of something that as uh, that for those of us who are awake or in this movement need to understand is that everything that's been inverted by this dark cult was at one point good. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what we're, what we're going to have to do is bring everything back to its original template. So when we talk yeah. about the Saturnalian festival and brotherhood, even though some of their activities were quite nefarious, it doesn't mean that Saturn is nefarious. They just manipulated the elements of Saturn to their own uh, activities, yeah. we'll say. I know we're going on YouTube, so I have to be careful what, what they say. But Saturn is where we get the word Satan from and Santa Claus. So um, it's where we get our wedding bands from, the rings of Saturn. Um, it's why women wear earrings, the rings of Saturn. It's why... Um, when we graduate from universities, we have a black square on our head, that Saturnalia. Uh, it comes from the top of Saturn. Um, you are, when you graduate, you are inducted into the fraternity of Saturn. That's why judges and priests wear black robes because they are judging and being a priest for the cult of Saturn, the cult of Satan, um, which we know a lot about the a modern day Christian church not actually being um christ-based but more satanic so that makes sense um we know that's why we call things like Times square uh your your own town square it's all coming from the square of saturn 
um, all sorts of stuff on this festival. Now, the festival of the Saturnalian took place at this time in the Roman Empire, the 12 days of the Saturnalian festival, which sounds very familiar, right? The 12 days of Christmas. Um, it was a you know, a fun party where they wore bright colors and they drank and they had feasts. They also did, um, figure out how I can say this on YouTube, rituals of the humankind, we'll say, yes. in, the, in the temple to Saturn. Y'all know what I'm saying. Um, and uh, yeah, and then it, of course, runs into the new year, which is um, the worship of the God. I think it's Jan Yu as well, which is not the real new year. The real new year should be in the springtime. But um, anyway, so Cindy, do you want to take over from there and talk about Saturn a little bit? Well, I will talk about the good side of Saturn. Perfect. <laughs> is that is that is that okay? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Saturn Saturn was created for everything was created for good. It just got inverted by uh, by that group. Well, you that's, know, so. well, that's the reason I wanted to talk about more of the the so so that some of the more like the truth can come out. Like Saturnalia was definitely it was um, you know there's Saturn and then Kronos is the Greek the Greek version the, the father of time. He's one of the elder planets. And in the Romans, they also considered him the planet of agriculture because, you know, Saturn is a planet of limitations, but he's also kind of like the planet that, you know, that rules time. And if you're wanting to make a peace and understanding with time, if you want to understand your own limitations and how to work with your limitations, you know, you can pull in Saturn in this kind of a way, not in a nefarious way, but in a way to just understand yourself more and to understand like, you know, like your limitations and, and how you can like bust through them and work through them. Well, Saturn, he was also a uh, the, the the planet for agriculture, which was one of the reasons that uh, like the uh, not the nefarious, but just like the regular folks, they 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 uh, did the Saturnalian festivals because yes, the winter solstice was coming, and the winter was also uh, for all the indigenous people at the time. You know, whether it was North or South America or Euro European, well, it's mainly uh, North America and South America is is, on, is flipped, right? But the winter solstice was also, it, it was a celebration of the return of the light, of course, um, but it was also uh, a time when famine, it was, a, it was a, a, a big time for things like famine and stuff to happen because the crops were going to run low and all this stuff. And so they did a festival for Saturn to help like with, to, to get through the, the winter solstice. Mm -hmm. And then they put up things like, you know, Christmas trees and the wreaths and all that stuff to represent, like the greenery represented, like there's still life, there's still life within winter. So let's remind ourselves of that. And, and most of the things that they, they did, like the greenery and the Christmas trees and all that was either a, a celebration or an, or an offering, you know, to, to, the, to the planet Saturn and also um, to ward off evil spirits. Almost everything was to ward off evil spirits because at the time that's that's the way they lived, right? Because it's if, if if starvation and storm and all this storms and all these plagues uh, things happened, I mean that was their it was, uh, there's there's evil spirits. So they they put up like Christmas trees and wreaths and and they had all their ceremonial practices to ward off anything that was that that could be you know considered nefarious or that would cause a problem for themselves. And so. Uh, Saturn was just a uh, Saturnalia was just a big festival, a celebration of uh, the return of the light, mm -hmm. and uh, um, and in the old Roman times, uh, there there was a, a time that was considered the golden age way back when, when actually Saturn was the ruler. Yep. But it was also a time when everything was. Um, was prosperous and agriculture was good and it was strong and so that's why they celebrated Saturnalia as well as as a way of honoring this golden age of of time and and then there was the gift givings and a lot of debauchery <laughs> you know but debauchery of the more of the celebratory kind and where they inverted mm -hmm. things like uh you know because of course they had slavery back then but then um they turned the slaves into masters for that one day and the masters were the ones that were serving the slaves and, and they did things like that during during the festival of saturnalia so that is more of like more of the upside of the festival 
when there wasn't, you know, when there's not any negative things going on. Yeah. Yeah. And again, guys, I want to really specify that, that there, everything that's been inverted um, in our world started as a positive thing. And it's interesting because I, we know that all of the, if you guys have been on my channel for a while, you remember when we read through the Apocalypse of Abraham, which was one of the banned books of the Bible. And I'll say it again, the reason why these books were banned, it wasn't about protecting us. It was about protecting the powers that be. But in the Apocalypse of Abraham, um, God tells Abraham that the planets and the stars live in the fifth firmament and that they are messengers. Well, we know that messengers is also another name for messenger is angel. And so there's a life within planets that we have not been made aware of, but it is in all these old texts. And I got this from a man named Zebediah Rice, and he explained it like our earth that we live in is the physical world. Our moon is the emotional world. Mercury is the intellectual world. And these are the three human life experiences. But then we make a pivot with Venus and Venus takes us into the intuitive self. And this is where Mars, Jupiter and Saturn lie. And so with that being said, if we look at Saturn from the way God created it, then God did create Saturn to be a messenger. We know that when we're 20, when we hit the age of 27, we each go through our own Saturn return, which is wild, which I don't think you're actually an adult until you go through that Saturn return because it totally kicks your ass and, uh, yeah, yeah, morning knows <laughs> that Saturn returns. I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <I> know. <laughs> do y'all want to speak on that a little bit more about, to the audience about the Saturn return for when we're about 27 years old? Well, I can uh, yeah. definitely, I just like when I when I hit that, I actually went through a little dark night of the soul as well. And you really had to look at where you are in your life. It's like, it's like for me, it's like the papa coming home now. Okay, what have you done in 30 years? Or you know, what have you done? Okay, cool. Yeah. But, uh, sort out stuff, sort out stuff. So is that really and, and what is amazing about that as well? If you look at the SRA survivors. That is also the same time when they their programming starts wearing off. Really? Yeah, this is around about the same time as the Saturn return where their programming starts um, going off. So it's fascinating. So I always think about when we speak about it, I mean, Chantel can speak about it even more, but when it's usually that time when their um, programming goes off because Saturn comes back and Saturn says, okay, you need to sort out your stuff now. Closet, throw every, all the stuff out of the closet, rearrange, get sorted. It's like the real authority figure. And I mean, it's like, and if you look at uh, why they invert that energy, I can understand it because it's like, it's like, Take no, sh take no bull. Yeah, oh, yeah, you <laughs> can say that. Stuff. It's, like, it's either if you were bad, you're going to get some bad stuff coming back to you. And if you were good, there's going to be some good stuff coming back to you. It's yeah. like that uh, comic planet for me in, in that sense. So yeah. they want to like, I, they want to um, harvest that comic energies and maybe like create even more fuel. I, I can, I'm could. i just thinking about it right now, if why they're using that planet for like Satan and everything like that is for that karmic energy. It's because if, if you look at Saturn, it's really the karmic stuff that comes back to you. It's like res a resolution, uh, rev like taking that, yeah, coming back around. Yeah. So maybe that's why they want to harvest in that energy, I, I think, right now. And that's <laughs> I don't know. Like, I feel like because Saturn is also like the matrix too, you know, Saturn is the ruler of like the time, like you said. So it's like, you have to get up at this point. You have to eat at this point. You have to go to work. So there is a element of Saturn that could be a little boring because it's like matrix based. It's like how to like live, how to stay alive basically, but they look how they've used that so, to, to just over time, they've harnessed that energy so much to like really force us into this like controlled grid. But it's interesting about the Saturnalian, uh, the, the return of Saturn at 27, because you think about it too, like when a kid is in their early to mid twenties, if they make a mistake or they're, you know, some, it's, it's okay, you know, like you're still young, but then once you jump over the 27 mark, it's not, it's more serious at that point. Cause you really entered into like the land of being an adult. And you, you have to be, I mean, what is it in the United States? Kids can stay on their parents' health insurance until they're 26, right? Cindy, is that correct here in the United States? I th wow. think so. And also, um, I, I find it interesting that about the same time that the, the Saturn return happened, 
happens is when your brain gets fully myelinated Mm because um, it's not until you're, it starts somewhere about 20, it can be somewhere between 23 to 27 years old. Like a human brain isn't formulated, completely formulated until about that age, which is another reason why certain amounts of, of maturity comes in, why 20 year olds make, you know, not the greatest decisions in the world because their, their frontal lobe hasn't myel, myelinated <laughs> yet. But I just find that the it interesting how those two pieces come together. Like when your brain is finally fully formed, and then your Saturn return, they 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 coincide with each other. With each other, you get your universe beats the crap out of you right around the time that your brain fully formed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the human is very beautifully designed. That's for sure. I mean, like the whole stages of how we become a human. And that's why we're here. We're here to be humans. We're not here to be like spiritual beings having spiritual. That we are. We are spiritual beings having to, having to. We came here for the human experience, and you yeah. can't fast forward that stuff. No, you can't fast forward that stuff. And I think a lot of um, um, let's say new ages that those people not going back to the ancient ones. They want to fast forward stuff, quick fixes, quick. You know, I, I want to activate my kundalini, open my third eye, but being a human it takes that you have to go through that stages of physical development teenager 20s 30s and really climb that ladder and that's i think what all what people would call um growing up gracefully growing old gracefully and not yeah. forcing it so yeah <laughs> we have to go through those stages like the Saturn return and and everything is connected so beautifully if you look at the body and the stars and the stages, everything is very much synchronized. So there's such yeah. um, beauty in that. Anyways, what do you guys think? <laughs> well, I'm quite looking forward to growing up and more disgracefully as each year goes by. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think I can have that bit of it as well. It's the standard joke in our family that we <clears throat> grow up disgracefully. So, but all in moderation, of course. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now we have a second Saturn return at what 60? Is it 60? We get our second Saturn return. Am I correct in saying that? I don't think there's mid one. 50s. 50. Mid 50s. 50s. It'll yeah, be from any time 50s. from your mid 50s. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just one and, and done. Usually... So that'll usually be when we go through menopause. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So depending also how many times Saturn has gone retrograde. Um, and at what stage you were born, you know, and where, how Sanit, uh, um, Saturn was aspecting at the time. Wow. So, of course, when and how many times along its journey, it's gone retrograde. So, you know, some people will have a Saturn return 27. It could be anything from, let's say, 27 till 32. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that'll be, you know, when we get our real first, often people will then maybe have get married then or have a baby um some life-changing experience often occurs through which we need to learn our lessons you see for me um i'm a double aquarian but if you look at ancient astrology um saturn rules aquarius yep so uh, yeah. <laughs> um i yeah so i i i've learned to work with saturn a lot so basically if i'm looking and i love the ancient the ancient teachings i really do you know because i really think there's so much more tangible truth in that before all this icing was iced over you know so for me that is that that is very real because saturn gets a really hard rap because of these reasons but really when you look at that saturn is the wise old teacher he's known in astrology as the wise old uncle mm -hmm. so you can look at a saturn as being the punisher and the one that says I don't see Saturn as that, you see, because I must say a lot of a lot of people, for example, see God as this authoritarian figure that's going to judge and punish you. Mm -hmm. I don't. I've never had that experience with God. I've always had a beautifully positive experience in my childhood with God, that God is the sun. And I just see God as the sun and wrapping me with rays. So for me, that's what Saturn was. When I had my Saturn return, my fiance was killed in a carjacking. 
And a week before that, I was taken for 500,000 Rand in my business. So within 10, within a week, I lost everything. My child was 10 years old. So I had to do some very, very fancy footwork to understand. But thank gosh, I was already understanding astrology. Mm-hmm. And I was already studying astrology. So that taught me, and I knew immediately, uh, uh, seeing how things were aspected, what I needed to learn. So I knew that's where my greatest spiritual growth lay. And it's because of that, that I do the work I do today. Yeah. So I sat with God, and I sat with myself, and I sat with my pain, and I saw the transformational or the alchemy within that. Mm-hmm. And that's when I was led onto my path. So had it not been for that, I would not be doing what I'm doing today. And through that experience, I've been able to dive very, very deep into myself and find gems within myself that I didn't even know existed. And through that, I've been able to pass that on because that's the gift through the experience that Saturn taught me. So Saturn is the transformational uncle. And also when we look at um, the chakra system, Saturn is the root chakra. Mm -hmm. So I always say, and this is my philosophy, the root chakra is the chakra of karma. Because when you look at that chakra, a child comes in, it's the naught to eight developmental stage, right? So a child is completely helpless during that period of their lives. They're relying on everyone to take care of them. Societies, teachers, all of these things. So when that is a safe environment, the child has a safe feeling. When it's not a safe environment, when Saturn goes ballistic, it's also, I believe, karma that child has brought in, in this life, that that helplessness is eventually, when you understand the structure of Saturn, because Saturn gives structure, Mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it's up to us to get the flow within the structure. And that's where we as humans get it wrong, because the structure would be the masculine and the flow the feminine. So we are still separated within the masculine feminine. And we can see that in the relationships we have, right? With men and women, we completely, mostly don't understand each other. But when we fall in love with Saturn or the masculine within you, then you understand structure is something very necessary in order for the flow to occur in a harmonious and a focused way. So that's what Saturn is for me. So you understand your karma, you understand your foundation, and if it's distorted, you understand you've made that agreement with God before you came in to experience this broken state in order to rebuild, which is what the root chakra is about, right? Earth and Saturn. And when you have that stable understanding, and you don't get that when you're a child, let's face facts. These are things we only receive much later on in life. But then we go back and we rebuild and we understand our journey. We understand our lessons. We've received the lessons from Saturn. We've sat with a wise uncle and we've looked at ourselves and we've melted down our resistances. And then the goal occurs. That's where the alchemy lies. Is that ability to, to, to melt that lead, to let Saturn just... Take that, because Saturn's the nuts and the bolts, you know? It's the nuts and the bolts of the planet. It's got to be that fine, working, well-oiled machine. And when that well-oiled machine is well-oiled, it works very well. And everything within the vicinity works well, too. So that, for me, is what Saturn is about. And that's what Saturn brought me. So I love Saturn. And how interesting today that Christmas, which is the Saturnalian festival, falls on Saturday which is the day named after Saturn, for those who didn't know that. Now, we know in the old um, Jewish faith and the original Christian faith that you were supposed to rest on the Sabbath, which is Saturday, the Saturday. And in traditional yoga, we rest on Saturday because it's the day of karma, of of our karma. That's a Saturn day. So it's a day of reflection, of deep reflection over what wow. we've learned. And so when we start, I, I love how you said that Shanti about understanding the way, like how our ancestors understood this system 
and they worked it into the daily lives. I mean, all of our, you know, Monday is the moon, Sunday is the sun. Uh, we go on and on with all the different mm. planets have different days associated. Uh, Tuesday is Mars, which is also in the Hindu faith. That's the day of Hanuman, which is the warring monkey God that we spoke about a little bit um, for with a few up, few round tables ago. And like in India, or in, even here in, in the United States, like we don't give students new postures on Tuesday because it's the day of Mars. And so my teacher in India won't shave his face on Monday or on Tuesday, sorry, because he doesn't want to work with a razor because it's the day of Mars, which is the warring day. Um, it's so fascinating. So like our ancestors understood this. You know, you talk about the chakra system in the Bible, you look at um, Jacob's ladder. That's the chakra system. It's in all these old texts. So it is. And again, I, I want to yeah. emphasize that, that everything that we have in this world, darkness cannot create anything. It can only take from the light. So sad. So when we start to unravel Index. these, yeah. So Saturn is not itself is it, it has a proper template. It has a, a proper place within our, our society and our own personal makeup and our own personal understanding and in our own relationship with ourselves and the world around us. It's just, bad people have tried to manipulate the energy but we're going to claim that back and we're going to cleanse it and bring it back to where it needs to be because saturn is saturn is a messenger what do you guys think do you think it, planets are like we know that the earth is a conscious living being and the planets are as well but knowing that we don't actually know what we're standing on right now in this great awakening surprise we have no clue what what we're actually standing on what do y'all think of plan do you think all these other planets are like are in line with like the angels as far as their power and their abilities? I think there's a possibility for sure. And yeah, and they're, they're living entities that reflect who you are. You know, we've talked about before the mystics axiom or some call it the witches axiom, you know, the as above, so below. And the, 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 the stars, the cosmic forces are are forces that are simply reflections of our own self. Mm -hmm. And as part of that, you know, the seven main, the seven main planetary influences, because those were the ones that, that the ancient, she's like Neptune and Uranus and uh, Pluto, they weren't discovered quite yet, which is why they aren't a part of the, the older template, because they weren't, they, the, our, the ancient people hadn't seen it yet. But for the seven main planetary influences, you know, they were reflections of us. And uh, as part of that, like a reflection of our human experiences, the, the benevolent, like the fully benevolent planets were like, you know, Jupiter and Venus and sun and the moon and the ones that had a little bit of, and, and this is where, you know, you just got to get the wording right, because it's not like they're bad, but they also had to contain like the human aspects, mm -hmm. which is Saturn and Mars. So, you know, Saturn has, um, you know, like the limitations, things like uh, the Ch Chantel was saying, but it's there for you. Like if you work with Saturn in a good way, it's like one of the most powerful planets that you can work with because it busts through like your subconscious mm -hmm. and the things that, mm -hmm. um, that yeah. you might not want to look at yourself yet. You know, we've yeah. talked about the, the subconscious and the shadow and all that, and Saturn helps to pull that that out of you. So, uh, you know, Saturn and Mars, those usually hold the energies of what we would, uh, what some would may consider we don't like them or we dislike them or they're they're a little they they give some friction. But yeah. that frick, some of that friction is is necessary, which which is why some of those are some of the most uh, potent planets to work with if you really want true alchemy and transformation work with the ones that you know give you a little bit yeah. of this and it will it's reveal square. things about yourself mm -hmm. yeah. the yeah, challenging but, when they challenge each other yeah yes exactly so, yeah absolutely they have brought us all this nice. information haven't they <laughs> and i know that you know and that there's different traditions you know, you're talking about the angelic beings and there's different traditions, but I've also heard that, you know, Archangel Michael, Mikael is, is uh, very related to the sun, like the sun and Mikael, but, you know, I think there's different, again, different lines, different traditions that will tell you different. And the Gabrielle is with the moon. 
and uh, um, Raphael, I believe is with Mercury. Um, uh, I can't remember the other ones. <laughs> There's like a line of angels that are also yeah, very much yeah. tied to the planets as well. Those are the three that I remember. I actually have huge oracle cards here, but it's so funny because in my studies of the missing books of the Bible, growing up in the Presbyterian church, we only talked about two arch archangels and that was Michael and Gabriel. Mm -hmm. You know, of course we know Michael is like the uh, badass, like I'm going to cut the head off of the snake type of warrior angel. And he shows up as like a purple light. And then we have Gabriel who allegedly was the angel that, you know, told Mary and Joseph, they were going to be giving birth to the Christ child. But if you look through all the missing texts, of the Bible, you get all the names of this, these tribes of archangels um, that were, and it's, it's interesting. We you talk about like, the, we talk about the planets and how we don't actually understand. I don't think majority of people in our world right now really understand planetary involvement because we know that we haven't been fed the truth about the planets. Um, but we've also been robbed of information about the angels because they've taken away all these manuscripts that, that actually describe, I mean, the book of Enoch, we talked about this. I talked about this yesterday with a couple of people. Um, Enoch walks with a bunch of the different archangels, like they're in the book. Um, but of course that book was removed from text as well. And so, but how interesting is it that even when so much stuff was removed, we still found the information anyway. You know, that's how there's the Enochian, the Enochian dictionary, which is the the dictionary that he came up that uh, it was, I think, channeled messages, but it was the language of the, the angels, the Enochian dictionary. The light language. I actually know two people now that speak the light language. Um, yeah, I know a couple of people as well. They're amazing. It's mm -hmm. wild. It's wild. I got when I um when I heard them speaking on Monday night, I got like emotional, and I I had no idea what they were saying, but I was like, I got like um like resonated in my DNA to hear this like light language being spoken. So, yeah, yeah. So, what do you think, Catherine? Is this all new for you, or have you heard this before? Oh, I, um, I've heard it in different versions before. Um, so it's really nice seeing everyone's different perspective on it. And I suppose it's interesting when I was going through there, I was thinking, right, well, I wonder what I'm, I'm going to be much more aware now of watching the animals and if they have different behavior patterns on different days of the week, um, because it's not something actually I've paid much attention to before. So I'm definitely going to pay some attention to that and and see how they're responding. Um, and I think. I think it's funny, isn't it? We say how everyone's distorted everything. But I think a lot of it, we know, we know deep in our bodies, we know deep in our souls, don't we, that it wasn't ever true. And most of it didn't make sense of what we've been told before. So um, yeah. I think a lot of it is like you always say, walking each other home. When you hear a lot of this, it just makes sense. It just makes a lot of sense. Although I do always wonder, with the whole planetary things, it's so intriguing because like you and I've spoken about on numerous occasions where we don't really know what we're standing on at the moment, but isn't that the same for the whole planetary system as well? So the energy is mm. absolutely, but what everything is really like and how far away everything is and what they're actually made of and what they actually look like, it's just it's such a big unknown still, isn't it? And I really like that mystery. I think there's some things that should remain quite mysterious. Absolutely. So my question is, I agree, you, actually. <laughs> do Absolutely. Y'all think, plan think planets could be portals as well? Mm. You think you can go into a planet? Because I've heard that about the sun. I don't want to get near the sun, though, because that still kind of scares me a little bit. But <laughs> I mean, you call them down. That's yeah. how you work yeah, with yeah. the planets, yeah. is yeah. You, you call them down. When you make sacred space and, and you want to work with the planets in that way, yeah, like you, you know, you create, oh, I was looking here. I have like altars all over my house, <laughs> but where you can, and I used to have them set up like one for Venus and one for Jupiter and one for the sun and here and there, but um, you can call them down and work with them for sure that way. And and I think, you know, that way you you absorb the energy. I don't know if you would consider that like a portal, but that is like you absorbing and it's it's like the energy of that particular planet is with you. It comes to you, it comes yeah. to you. You meet it yeah. and it meets you. 
Do you know all the days, Cindy? Because I know only a few of the days that are associated with planets. Do you know the whole seven day a week? Do any of you guys know each day? I know like uh, Saturday is that Monday, the moon, Tuesday, the moon. Mars. Tuesday is Mars. And, and you know, the, um, the English version, most of the English version is named after the Norse gods yeah. and goddesses. Yeah. Whereas if you say it in Latin, that takes more of the Roman and the plant, the the planets, because you know the, the the Norse, the Greeks, the Romans, they all have very similar entities and deities, like you know, for instance, Jupiter and Thor and uh, 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 and Jove, uh, Zeus, Zeus, excuse me, Zeus, like they're all kind of representative of the Thursday. So yeah. Thursday is Thor's day, which yep. is the Norse, but then it's Jueves in like more the Latin or that's the, that's the Spanish way you say Jueves, which is Jove's day. And Jove's is also another name for Jupiter. And like Friday, it could be Freya's day or Frigg's day, which is the Norse goddess, but then it's Viernes, which is like Venus's day. And yes, so Mercury is Wednesday, Miercoles, Mercury Wednesday, and uh, Wednesday. I don't know the Norse god is a source associated with that one, but I'm, I'm sure there's one there. And then Mars, yes, Martis, yeah. uh, Tuesday, and uh, I'm, I'm going all over the place here with the days, but yes, Sunday, Sunday, Moon Day, Monday, Monday Tuesday, Monday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we talked about Venus, that's the day of the goddess, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Saturday is your Saturn. Well, you even have in the Hindu yeah. faith, the different deities have different days, like Monday is Shiva, uh, Tuesday is Hanuman, and then I don't know the rest. <laughs> it's just on one day and Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, and there's also uh, planetary hours, yep. too, like yeah. certain hours during the day, which is fascinating, right? Right, Monday. And there's an app that you can. It's Time Nomad. It's an app that you can download on your phone. It's one of the apps, and it tells you what planetary hour that you're in. So, like for instance, let me oh. see if I can find it. Right, right now we are in the hour of Venus. Oh, here on the East Coast. Yeah, the there you are. Yeah, so we're 10 a.m. <laughs> here. Venus, then we're probably, uh, what's the opposite of Venus right now? <laughs> <laughs> How does that work, work, work then if time's an illusion? Mm -hmm. I, I, time, yes. is, time is a point in space. That's yeah. what time is. It's a position yeah. in space. It's where you are at in space. So Sports time is an illusion, but it's very true. It's very real. Um, it's still unexplainable, but it's still, it is real. And it's where you are at yourself in space. The and now. you can shift into, yeah, in the now. And you can shift in any timeline that you want by making choices or doing stuff like that. But I, yeah, I so said time is, I love, I, some people it's like time is illusion. Yes, but time is very relevant. So with what, it's just a word for a, a moment in where you are with, I would say the creator, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I mean, everything is the creator. Everything is God. Everything is, I mean, we're just aspects of God experiencing himself in my world. Everything is just God. So where yeah. are you inside of God right now? <laughs> where do you choose to be right now? Um, for me, that is, and that's why everything reflects like the planets. Everything is consciousness in that sense. If you, I think if I speak about God, it's like a consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's a consciousness. It's like this little, it's this fine fabric that creates everything. It's the consciousness. So planets carry consciousness, like crystals. If you take crystals as well, if you work Wait, with crystals, I, like me, yeah. Yeah, I love my crystals. I, I love them. Oh, I got once, you get to know, once you get to know a crystal, it's almost like that energy becomes part of you. So when I am, I don't, then I don't need the crystal with me anymore. When I was like, I do a lot of, when I work with clients and stuff like the crystal healing and stuff, I don't need that crystal with me anymore. I can just think about that crystal and the energy will come out of my hand. It's like, I can feel that same energy. And the same with me is with planets as well. Planets are there to just help us um, understand something inside of us that's already inside of us. Mm. So once you understand that thing inside of you, then suddenly, oh, then it clicks, then you become Saturn, 
then you become that crystal. Then you become, and it's like that's how God wanted it. I think like the, the illusion of separateness is the greatest illusion of it all because we've never been separate from God. We've never been separate from planets. We've never been separate from crystals. We've never been separate from the angels. It's everything is so much connected inside our own bodies. And once you get it, then you don't need it anymore. Then you become it. Yeah. And yeah, crystals has like, taught that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You go. It's like what I was saying, you know, we were saying earlier about Saturn being the planet that governs the root chakra. Well, each of the chakras are governed by a planet. So what you were saying, Bryce, is, you know, are they portals? Oh, hell yeah, they're portals. Yeah. Every, each one of your chakras is a portal. So when you tap into, again, you know, the energy within you. So one of the, one of the Indian Swamis said something very beautiful. Um, and he said, as long as your inner astrology is not aligned, your outer astrology can never be aligned. <laughs> so, you know, the planets within you. So when we're working with each energy within that, that let's say your, 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 your sacral center, which would naturally be the moon, the feminine, the water energy. Okay, so let's say if you're having issues in that area, the energy you would work with is the feminine moon, subtle energy that shows you a shadowy side of yourself and if you're just still and 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 you know if we like in terms of yoga the yin yoga would match that you know you still you you reaching into those places within yourself that are not always comfortable mm -hmm. you know so it's that it's that it's that it's that type of thing with with each with each of the planets so yes there are portals they're portals to within yourself and the external version of that is merely reflected um, in your in your external world. And what I wanted to say as well um, about the Saturn return, you know, you were saying earlier about when do we have our second Saturn return. Now, the first Saturn return is always about um, teaching. You know, as we said, in my experience, it was now, do you become a victim of just another statistic in this country of crime and bitter and because that's what happens a lot, you know, here, around here. Or do you take this experience and turn it around and turn it into the best gift that God could ever imagine you to have? And I said, oh, hell yeah, the second option, thank you. You know, so if we choose to remain victims of our circumstances, even after Saturn has come around at the age of, let's say, 27 to 30 in our lives, and gives you these challenges. So naturally, if you've gained the lesson through the teaching, you're going to be exploring and expanding for the next 27 years, right? So let's say then by the time 54, 55, 60 comes, you have your second Saturn return. And what happens then is if you haven't taken the gift and the lessons from this first 27 years it then becomes double yeah. so that's when we usually go through menopause or or change of life whatever you want to call it and that's where a lot of women especially will battle because you've got to also see that's where we experience and how we experience our change of life it really is just a transition into another phase of life um, now you're either going to battle with that transition because you haven't really navigated the roads that well for the last 27 or 30 years. You've ignored a lot of things. You've shortcutted here and there. You haven't taken keys for certain things. And, you know, let's think about it that, in that practical way. And now when you get to that age and you have wisdom, so now you offered wisdom because that's usually when you become a grandmother or, you know, your children are, 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 are out of the home and you're wiser, you, you know, so that's where wisdom will then become part of your nature. And that's the gift that Saturn brings us, is absolute wisdom. Yeah. And you know, so every phase, and of course, then another, depending on you, uh, somewhere between 80 and 90, if you're lucky enough to live that, that old, you would have another experience I was about to ask because we've been hearing that we're going to live like 400 extra years. Years. I'm like, now how many Saturn returns are we going to go through? <laughs> just getting wiser and wiser, right? We, we just get wiser and wiser. I love, I love that. Saturn. Yeah. 
I just have to add to that. What's the planet after Saturn? It's Jupiter. It's Jupiter. Yeah. So then the big, big happy grandpa or grandma comes and spoil you because you finally lived or you yes. finally resolved and everything. So yeah. then comes your luck. Then comes your, um, you know, the, the yeah, expansion. So, yeah. yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's funny. It's and my all reason- good. Just go through it. And grandma's my- going to give you some chocolates. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was saying my research, um, a lot of these old uh, Catholic churches in Europe, especially Notre Dame and, and uh, France, were built on top of Jupiter temples. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jupiter was wow. a Mac Daddy. Yeah. And Jupiter was the Mac for the Rose Christ as well. Jupiter was very, I mean, he was the most benevolent of the planets. Yeah. And there were big altars set up for Jupiter back in the and day, I, for sure. So, yeah. I heard I did an and of episode. course Saturn was the most malevolent, right? Jupiter the most benevolent and Saturn the most malevolent. So they were these opposing forces, what? the giving and the taking. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. It's oh. funny. Um, I was did I did a show with 107 once where he talked about the little um spot on Jupiter that we know that kind of looks like a, a thunderstorm, that that spot actually transfers to different and i'm totally paraphrasing what he said said guys i'm not going to say it as eloquently as he said it but it transfers to certain places on our planet as well especially where we see like the pyramids that also connects back to jupiter as well to this little spot on jupiter that we all know that little eye of jupiter so it's so fascinating isn't it and i think i think you're right i think i love the mystery more than the actual knowledge because there's so much more power there than we're actually aware of and Mm. um you know, we know that astrology itself, even backing away from the planets and just looking at the constellations of the stars is really our t- how it keeps that, that, that galactic time for us mm, is where absolutely. we actually are in relationship to all the other cosmos because we're not separate from the cosmos. We're a part of that galactic cosmo. And, you know, it's interesting when we look at the structure that we've been given as far as, you know, the sun and all the planets that kind of revolve around the sun. But if you, if you restructure how we're living I almost kind of see it as almost like we're not like a snow globe you know like it kind of reshapes the way these planets actually move around where we are in order to inform us does that make sense am I making sense and guys again I if you had told me five years ago that I would be questioning what the earth looked like I would have told you you were crazy but right now (laughs) <laughs> yeah no agree anything's possible <laughs> anything's yeah, possible right. it was Catherine and i we've talked about this like how far away actually are we like are we really yeah. top so if you want woo. <laughs> yes you were laughing about the canadian geese flying over to england and you know how far they have to fly from canada to get to england but then we're like wait a minute they could just because i was in so in awe about how amazing their bodies must be let alone their navigation skills when i need my sat nav for everywhere but these canadian geese you're thinking wow that is incredible and i was saying if i find out that really we're so much closer i'm gonna have to go and have a word with them and take it all back and say (laughs) (laughs) i'm not that impressive after all there were 12 yesterday by the way there were 12 on my neighbor's pond Wow. Full local have appeared. Yeah. It was quite well, if anybody speaks geese, maybe they can tell us exactly how far away the United Kingdom is from the North American continent. So they can I ask, like, no, but, it only takes me five minutes. <laughs> so they weren't gonna tell me yet. No, no. I have to figure it out for myself. But it is such fun. It is really, really interesting. And it's interesting how you get to a stage, I mean, you get you think that what we've been told about Christmas has been there forever. And then you realize how recent in our history that story and those celebrations have actually been taking place. It's quite- Yeah, they, they yeah. Uh, Council of Nicaea, was when, which I've talked about a lot on my channels when Constantine changed, gave the Saturnalian festival, the Christ's birth story. Yeah. Uh, Burden of the Yule log. That's part of uh, the Saturnalian festival of creating the warmth for north so the saturnalian festival is very for anybody who um i love how you say cindy the in- indigenous to northern europe which is well you have some northern european in you too as well don't you cindy don't you have european yeah i actually well? well i have um i have the, the southern europe like spain of course because that's you know who came over to south america so I have spain uh portuguese and uh what's the other one uh, Spain and Portugal are the main ones, but I do have a little bit of Northern, like I have some Irish, which is really strange. <laughs> Maybe yeah, like Irish, I'm like Irish. 
<laughs> the Irish are mystical. What's a mystical land? Oh, I love the Celtics. Yeah, and they're mystical. Uh, but, mm, and I think you know I it's sad. Celtic. I think I think a lot of us, you know, white people, that I think a lot of our indigenous roots were the first to kind of be taken away from us. But we still we it's, still have them in our, our our culture. It's just called something else now. Well, they were the first to be demonized by the whole you know the whole everything that happened with the 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 transformation over to the christian faith years the western the european were the first to be demonized and to uh, to be absorbed you know that's what happened with a lot of these winter solstices it was just simply absorbed into the the christian faith so that they can you know make everyone follow along yeah because, like it's yeah. like saturday i think they tried to really uh take away Saturn but they couldn't because it was so ingrained within the people within the Roman people to celebrate that mm -hmm. that that you know however hard they tried to take it away they couldn't so instead they absorbed it within the Christian holiday and came up with like the 12 days of Christmases and yeah like and, and for the for people who are I know someone might ask um, we get the name Christ, Christmas from Christ Mass which was the mass that they would have on this particular day for Christ for this, that was really the Saturnalian. So that's where we get Christmas from. Uh, I know um, I did a deep dive of this on this last Christmas for a while, even when, uh, so when, when uh, the UK had uh, their revolution where they got rid of, um, or they, was it King Charles the second or the first? I can't remember which one of the Charleses. And they had um, Cromwell as their, was it Cromwell? Who, and my mind's going blank now. The name of the guy that kind of ruled England as a Republic, they got, he was a Puritan. They got rid of these, these holidays. They got rid of Christmas. And, um, and uh, the people of England were so pissed that they didn't get to go celebrate and have the festivities. They not only wanted to bring Christmas back, but they wanted to bring the royalty back as well, because at least under the rule of the, <laughs> of the Stuart line they could have their Christmas celebration so and I know the Puritans that came to America at first did not did not celebrate any would not celebrate any of these holidays so our ancestors knew that there was even our more direct ancestors knew that the roots of these holidays were not necessarily how we believe them to be today but you can see again how ingrained this celebration mm -hmm. is into our DNA from our ancestors and here in America, Christmas is definitely probably the biggest holiday I would say in America right now. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely the biggest holiday. Um, most people are off the whole like week up to, to New Year's. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course in America, we have Thanksgiving right before it. So that kind of kicks off the, the holiday season for us. But, um, but yeah, and that just shows you like how, how deeply affected we are by our ancestors too and what they knew about this, this holiday season. Yeah. yeah christianity wow. is like a new religion as far as i'm concerned yeah oh absolutely if you look at the evolution of humanity i mean it's only a couple of thousand years old they're the newer religions the old religions are the ones that are in your mm, they're in your dna they're in your blood and bones and you look at even up in like north because i have my dna makeup is mostly uh english german french scandinavian i have a little bit of like greek a little bit of Coptic Egyptian, which I find to be the coolest, but it's just very little bit. Um, and you'll even look at like the Scandinavian, like they they didn't convert over to the Christian. I mean, most of our ancestors in the Northern European area, they were practicing their Nordic fates and their, their for a long time. I mean, it took a long time for it to really settle into Northern Europe. Um, and like I said, a lot of the old churches in Europe are built on top of Jupiter temples. So there, there you go. They just use the same location to continue to then merge the, the systems yeah. together. So it's super fascinating. And I know that Catherine, you have to go soon because of your next call, but I just I just pulled some um, angel oracle cards for our Christmas holiday. And then we'll, so we got Uriel Trust, Raphael Communion, mm -hmm. and I love this one. This is Metatron Divine Intelligence. Mm -hmm. Cool. So that's the message from the animals or the animals. The Love angels. It. Well, angels are animals. Are mm -hmm. angels? Animals are angels. So <laughs> that's just the communication of divine. What was the last one? Divine. Divine intelligence. So trust. Yes, it's trust it. the communication of divine intelligence. Yes. Okay. Yes, and how that's like a message for our whole great awakening too, right? Like you know, that we have to learn how to trust ourselves as well. Speaking of DNA and how we're feeling things in our DNA, like that. You have, as you were saying, Mornay, we, God's always been there. Yeah. He's always, I, always been there. 
It's so beautiful. I have to share this. Like if you look at our bushmen and our shamans in Africa, they could they would sit and they could listen to the stars. They would hear the stars move. Now I don't know if anybody of you have had this experience before. I had like very much, I was like, I had lots of moments where I was sitting three o'clock in the morning or four o'clock, even in my days of partying back when I was in college and everything. And I would connect with a star and I could the star would like become bright and you can hear the vibration of this. It's almost like you could hear the vibration. You could it's almost like it becomes brighter and you really connect with a star. Now the Bushmen could do this like back then they knew about Sirius before white people modern people even knew about Sirius and all this planets and stuff they already knew about these planets back then they they put it on cave paintings and stuff before we could even see it so that's the connection we have with with everything that's how we understood this way back before there was anybody telling us what to think or what to do we were sitting there and looking at stuff we were just looking at it connecting with it and then we understood it and yeah. that information is still within every cell and everybody's bodies and i just have to share that that that's the the, the Connect the, the divine intelligence. We are connected to that, and we just need to reconnect mm -hmm. back to it. That's what we're doing right now. We're reconnecting back to our old understanding yeah. of everything. There's nothing new in this universe. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas is going to continue. We yes. just have to reclaim it back again, recreate it a different way, or maybe like do a little bit of adjustments. But I think as a mass and um, society, we've we understood that Christmas is not just about. The birth of Jesus anymore, or the um, pagan holiday, or whatever you want to think about it. It's really a time of oh, let's get together, let's share some love, let's make some effort to like come together. And I mean, that's the beauty in it. And maybe that's yeah. what Christmas should be for all of us. If that's the you know, we yeah. decide what Christmas is going to be to us. It's like you a know. Victor Hugo. Victor Hugo says, "To love another person is to see the face of God." Absolutely. And that's what these holidays are. And that's, you know, that's because I know a lot of people on our side of the, the fence here want to like get rid of these holidays again because they've been so tainted. But my greatest memories are Christmas. I cannot tell you guys how excited tomorrow for Christmas Eve, I'm going to go give my niece and nephew their hoverboards. I am so excited. I cannot wait to play with them on their hoverboards. Like that to me is what Christmas is. And it's those memories. Those hoverboards aren't gonna last forever, but it's that it's that memory of just playing with it, having that laughter. And of course, down here in the, the deep south, we don't get white Christmases ever. So, so we can and y'all in Af Southern Africa don't either. So <laughs> no. sunny Christmas. Yes. Are you do you have snow, Christmas, Catherine? Yeah. Well, we've got snow forecast actually. So who knows? Oh. I mean, the weather's all over the place, but we should we have got snow forecast, but actually I don't want a white Christmas because where I live, the roads are impassable if, if we get snow. So, um, yeah, well, I'm not particularly keen for a white Christmas. Sorry to well, be next Christmas, you that. come here to Georgia, Catherine. Yeah, we'll swap. <laughs> well, we'll absolutely swap. But, yeah, exactly. And obviously, I've got to be able to make sure that I can get Rudolph his carrots okay and everything. That's, I still <laughs> do that, even though my children have to be. I still have to put the Tia Maria out and the carrots for Rudolph. That's really important. So Tia Maria, I love it. Connection. <laughs> uh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really important. The funny thing was, it wasn't long at all. I think my daughter was about four when she realised that I was actually drinking it. <laughs> I didn't manage to fool her for long at all. It was quite funny. But you are so right, Monet. The, the connection is so, so important. And getting people to you know, stop and spend that time with the loved ones. And and I know everyone watching this is not going to be the type of people that's going to let anyone else tell them, you know, who they can and can't see over Christmas. Um, and even if some other people are taking that into consideration, doesn't mean you can't, you know, send them love and just keep that open mm -hmm. invitation and that door open because that is so, so important, isn't it? Humans absolutely. need each other. Yeah. Yeah, and you can, humans yeah. need each other. Mm. Absolutely. Need well, each we're, other. We're, just, we're all just here to remind each other, right? Because, I mean, that's what we, each human being, and, you know, talking about the cosmic forces and nature, they're to remind us of things that we've forgotten. It's, it's like you said, it's not like it's never existed. Of course, it's existed since the beginning of time. The only thing is just it's been veiled. We've been confused. 
And mm -hmm. so the nature and the cosmos and each other, we're just here to remind each other again of, of what we really are and that we are like fractals of the universe. We, we contain the whole universe inside of us and we forget that. Mm -hmm. So we need our, our peeps uh, to help us to remember. We need nature. We need the stars to help us to remember that we are the stars exactly. or we are that mountain or we are like we are like each other, you know? So yeah, that's, exactly. that's you, you like, can't not exist. It's impossible for you not to exist. Like we, we, we get this idea of mortality and we're only here for a short time, but in reality, you can't not exist. You've always yeah. existed as part of the universe and as part of, you've always been here. So, and yeah, it's, I love that. Just remembering, remembering who we are. And, and as I say, people to people at time, like the same, the same creator who made the Rocky mountains also made you. Mm-hmm. That's powerful. Made the same stuff too. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, I know Catherine, you have to jump on your next oh, call, but guys, this is so we should do this again. Fun. Such fun. Thank you so much for your knowledge, everyone. I learned loads. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. So Thank lovely you, to see you again. That's Let's friend. do this again soon. Maybe we should do this at like yeah. every holiday and just be like, surprise, <laughs> this one's pagan too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 that would be fun uh, so i wish all you guys a very merry 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 christmas to the parents here in the united states i don't know if you guys do elf on the shelf in other countries but bless your hearts you only have a couple more days to go to move that damn elf because yeah. remember to move the elf so um, i know my sister is about to kill both her elves so um, yes we did not have that when we were kids but um, but, um i wish everybody watching all over the world a very very merry christmas if you are unfortunately alone right now because of what's going on in the world please know that you have friends here and we are wishing you all the best and all the love and hopefully by this time next year we'll be able to celebrate together as one big communal family so yeah. <laughs> we'll teleport amazing. together <laughs> <laughs> so all right guys lots of love to everybody out there. Everyone. lots of love big hugs bye big love. thank bye. you guys bye. lots of love Mwah. merry christmas Take care. Merry Christmas. Merry happy new year <laughs>